The video has been divided into three sections. The first section deals with some background material on UHF transposer sites and basic theory. The second section covers the details of the Silver Street transposer itself. The third part deals with the site performance checks that would normally be carried out during a routine visit to a Silver Streak site. Hello. Because of the nature of propagation at UHF, we all know that a large number of transmitting stations are required to provide an adequate population coverage. In fact, there are more than 50 main stations and in excess of 600 low-power relay stations. New low-power relay stations are being added each year. The equipment in use at the low-power relay stations therefore depends on power level and date of installation. First then, let's have a look at the equipment in use at one of the older sites. This UHF relay station at Bromsgrove receives and transmits the four television channels. All four services have approximately the same ERP. The viewer requires one receiving aerial for all four programs. The received signal strength will be similar for each service. The aerial system is mounted on a 150 foot self-supporting tower. The transmitting aerials are positioned inside a white cylinder for weather protection at the top of the mast. The actual transmitting aerial consists of a linear array of half wave elements with a total aperture of approximately 16 wavelengths. The four television channels transmitted by Sutton Coalfield are received by trough receiving aerials positioned lower down the mast. Each trough aerial uses four half-wave dipoles and provides a gain of around 14 to 15 decibels. The received signals are conveyed to the building by two low-loss foam dielectric 50-ohm coaxial cables. The receiving aerial cables are terminated by a passive frequency-selective four-way splitter which uses 3 dB couplers to provide a feed to each of the four receiver transmitter units, one for each service. A receiver transmitter unit is called a transposer. Each low power transposer feeds a power amplifier to produce an output power of approximately 200 watts peak sync. The amplifier uses a travelling wave tube in this case. The output of the travelling wave tube power amplifier then feeds a two-channel combiner, which in turn feeds a two-by-two, two, that is a four-channel combiner. The combined four services then supply the transmitting aerial. This diagram contains simplified details of a typical relay system and illustrates the position of the transposers. The low power transposer provides a frequency change between the input received channel and the output transmit channel. It also provides sufficient level for the power amplifier. This diagram shows more details of a low power transposer. The receive channel filter selects the required input signal and removes any unwanted frequencies from the RF amplifier and first mixer stage. The UHF amplifier, together with the receiver mixer and the receiver local oscillator, determine the noise figure of the transposer and ultimately the output signal to noise ratio which can be obtained. The receiver mixer converts the input channel to the selected IF band in the region of 30 to 40 megahertz. This signal is not demodulated down to a video signal since this would result in further signal degradation 
and equipment complexity. The IF amplifier stage would normally include some form of gain frequency correction, which can be used to ensure specified vision to sound power output ratios. Frequency translation of the IF to the output channel occurs in the transmit mixer, which is supplied with the transmitter local oscillator as well. The UHF power amplifier on the output generates a watt or so of output. To maintain the output power constant for variation in the input channel signal strength, an automatic gain control circuit is provided. The diagram shows an AGC controlled IF amplifier. The AGC circuit detects the peak sync output level and provides a DC voltage which is used to control the gain of the IF amplifier stage. This circuit is arranged to keep the output level constant for a reduction in input of around 16 decibels or so. You will find that various AGC circuits exist depending on the type of transposer used but all provide the same principle of maintaining the output power constant with change of input signal. The whole system from input channel filter to the output is termed a low power transposer, LPT. If more output is required from the transposer, then an external power amplifier can be added to provide the required radiated peak sync power. This amplifier can also be included in the AGC loop. The same basic principles that apply to Bromsgrove also apply to the site at Hope under Dinmore, which provides a four channel service to a population of approximately 250 using a Silver Street transposer. The aerial system is mounted on a self supporting lattice mast approximately 60 feet high. The transmitting system uses four collinear fan dipoles. The receiving system uses an array of four Yagi aerials. The building is of prefabricated construction and because it is such a small installation, any necessary wiring is done before it is brought to site. If we look inside the building, you can see that there's not a lot of room and this in some respect limits the amount of test equipment that can be used. The receiving aerial splitter is an active device and supplies all four Silver Streak transposers. The output feeder is fed via the four channel combiner at the top of the unit. Basic on station monitoring is provided by a monochrome receiver. What we haven't done yet is to take a look at the input signals being received by a transposer. These are displayed on a UHF spectrum analyzer. Note the four separate groups of spectral signals for the four incoming channels. The receive channel filter on the input of each transposer will select one of these signals. By altering the frequency scan of the analyzer, we can look at one of these incoming channels. It consists of two main carriers, one on the left, corresponding to the vision carrier, and six megahertz above this, the sound carrier. The color subcarrier lies 4.43 megahertz above the vision carrier. These low level signals are applied to the transposer input. <laughs> 